Hello. Welcome to Today in History, an AI podcast. I'm Steven. And I'm Ruth. We're the artificial intelligence hosts of this show. Every day, we'll tell you about the most interesting, consequential and sometimes forgotten facts in history that happened on this date. Politics, economy, war, religion, culture. One topic every day. Plus something that you would have heard on the news back then on this date. Also, about a holiday somewhere in the world, someone who was born and someone who died. Hope you stay with us. Please enjoy a few minutes to maybe get a little smarter and appreciate the enormity of every single day. Today is Sunday, April 21, 2024. The year is 1958. Our main topic, United Airlines Flight 736 collided with a U.S. Air Force fighter jet over southern Nevada, resulting in the deaths of all 49 people on board both aircraft. On April 21, 1958, United Airlines Flight 736, a Douglas DC-7, collided with a United States Air Force fighter jet over southern Nevada, resulting in the tragic loss of 49 lives. The flight was a scheduled transcontinental passenger service that departed from Los Angeles and was headed to New York City. The collision occurred when the airliner and the fighter jet, which were flying in clear weather conditions, crashed into each other at 21,000 feet, 6,400 meters, above the desert terrain southwest of Las Vegas. The context of this event is significant because it highlights the safety concerns that were prevalent in the aviation industry during the 1950s. At that time, midair collisions involving passenger aircraft were becoming increasingly common, and the loss of Flight 736 was one of several such incidents that led to a re-evaluation of air traffic control measures in the United States. The incident also underscored the need for better communication and coordination between civilian and military aircraft, as the collision occurred between a commercial airliner and a military fighter jet. The historical significance of this event lies in the reforms that it triggered in the aviation industry. The crash of Flight 736 led to a comprehensive overhaul of air traffic control procedures and the creation of new regulations to prevent similar incidents in the future. Additionally, the accident prompted the establishment of a new federal agency, the Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, which was tasked with overseeing and regulating all aspects of civil aviation in the United States. In conclusion, the collision of United Airlines Flight 736 with a U.S. Air Force fighter jet was a tragic event that had far-reaching consequences for the aviation industry. It highlighted the need for improved safety measures and better communication between civilian and military aircraft, ultimately leading to significant reforms that have made air travel safer for everyone. The year is 1821. On the news, Benderli Ali Pasha arrives in Constantinople as the new Grand Vizier of the Ottoman Empire. He remains in power for only nine days before being sent into exile. In a surprising turn of events, Benderli Ali Pasha has arrived in Constantinople as the new Grand Vizier of the Ottoman Empire. However, his tenure was short-lived, as he was sent into exile just nine days later. This unexpected turn of events has sparked interest and curiosity among historians and political analysts. Context, the Ottoman Empire was in a state of political turmoil during this time, with various factions vying for power and influence. The Grand Vizier, who served as the de facto prime minister of the Sultan, was a powerful figure with absolute power of attorney. However, the position was not without its challenges, as the Grand Vizier was often at the mercy of the Sultan's whims and could be removed at any time. Historical significance, Benderli Ali Pasha's brief tenure as Grand Vizier is significant because it highlights the political instability of the Ottoman Empire during this period. The fact that he was sent into exile so quickly suggests that there was a power struggle at play, and that different factions were vying for control. This event also underscores the importance of the Grand Vizier position, which was a key factor in shaping the political landscape of the Ottoman Empire. Overall, Benderli Ali Pasha's arrival and swift departure from the position of Grand Vizier is a fascinating piece of history that sheds light on the complex political dynamics of the Ottoman Empire during this time. Our selected holiday for today, Christian Feast Day, Abdi Kalas. 
Abdi Khalis, also known as Abdullah, was a Persian priest and martyr who was killed under the Persian ruler Shapur II on Good Friday, 345, along with another priest named Ananias and about a hundred other Christians. This event is commemorated on their Christian feast day, which is observed on March 13. The cultural significance of this holiday lies in its remembrance of the sacrifices made by early Christians for their faith. Abdi Khalis and his companions chose to stand by their beliefs, even in the face of persecution and death. Their martyrdom serves as a powerful reminder of the importance of faith and conviction, and inspires Christians to this day. This holiday is also significant because it highlights the enduring nature of Christianity. Despite the persecution and hardships faced by early Christians, their faith continued to thrive and spread. The story of Abdi Khalis and his companions is a testament to the strength and resilience of the human spirit, and serves as a reminder of the power of faith to overcome adversity. In addition, this holiday is a time for Christians to reflect on the value of sacrifice and the importance of standing by one's beliefs. It serves as a reminder that faith is not a passive belief, but an active commitment that requires courage and conviction. Overall, the Christian feast day of Abdi Kalas is a celebration of faith, courage, and conviction. It is a reminder of the sacrifices made by early Christians and the enduring nature of Christianity, and serves as an inspiration to Christians around the world. On this day, in 1924, Ira Leuven, American singer-songwriter and mandolin player, d. 1965, was born. Ira Leuven was a celebrated American country music singer, mandolinist, and songwriter. Born Ira Lonnie Loudermilk, he was known professionally as Ira Leuven. He was a cousin of the renowned songwriter John D. Loudermilk. Ira's music career spanned several decades, and he left an indelible mark on the country music genre. Ira's journey in music began early in life. He started performing with his brother, Charlie, as the Leuven Brothers. Their unique blend of traditional and honky-tonk styles, accompanied by Ira's skillful mandolin playing, gained them widespread recognition. They signed with Capitol Records in 1955 and went on to release numerous hit singles, such as I Don't Believe I'll Fall in Love Today and When I Stop Dreaming. Their success culminated in a Grammy Award for Best Country and Western Performance for their song El Paso. Ira's solo career took off in the early 1960s, with hits like He'll Have to Go and Satisfied with You. His smooth, emotive voice and heartfelt songwriting captivated audiences, earning him a place among country music's elite. He continued to perform and record until his tragic death in a car accident in 1965, at the age of 41. Ira Leuven's legacy extends beyond his music. He was a devoted husband and father, and his commitment to his family was evident in his life and work. He was known for his kindness and humility, and his contributions to the music industry have inspired generations of artists. In recognition of his remarkable career, Ira Leuven was posthumously inducted into the Country Music Hall of Fame in 1979. His music continues to be celebrated and enjoyed by fans of all ages, and his influence can be heard in the works of many contemporary country artists. In conclusion, Ira Leuven's life and music serve as a testament to his talent, dedication, and passion. His legacy continues to inspire and entertain, leaving behind a rich musical heritage that will be cherished for years to come. We remember the life of John Maynard Keynes, English economist and philosopher, born 1883, who died on this date in 1946. John Maynard Keynes was an English economist and philosopher, widely regarded as one of the most influential economists of the 20th century. Born in 1883, Keynes studied mathematics at King's College, Cambridge, and later began his career as a civil servant in the British government. However, it was his work in economics that truly made him a household name. Keynes' ideas on macroeconomics fundamentally changed the way economists and policymakers think about the economy. His groundbreaking work, The General Theory of Employment, Interest, and Money, published in 1936, challenged the traditional views of classical economics and introduced the concept of government intervention in the economy to stabilize output and employment. This theory, known as Keynesian economics, revolutionized the field and continues to shape economic policies to this day. Keynes' impact on economics extends beyond his theories. He was a key advisor to the British government during World War I and played a crucial role in the negotiations leading to the creation of the International Monetary Fund. He also served as a director of the Bank of England and was a prominent advocate for free trade and international cooperation. 
Despite his many achievements, Kane's life was cut tragically short. He died in 1946, at the age of 62, due to complications from a heart attack. However, his legacy lives on through the countless economists and policymakers who continue to draw upon his ideas and work. Today, Keynes' ideas remain a cornerstone of mainstream macroeconomics, and his influence can be seen in the policies of governments around the world. His work has been recognized and celebrated with numerous honors, including a Nobel Memorial Prize in Economic Sciences. In conclusion, John Maynard Keynes was a visionary economist whose ideas and contributions have had a profound impact on the field of economics and the world at large. His legacy continues to inspire and shape the global economic landscape, and his work remains a testament to his brilliant mind and dedication to improving the lives of people around the world. This was Today in History, an AI podcast. Brought to you by Decor Studios. All content was sourced from Wikipedia and processed with open source large language models. This podcast is released under Creative Commons Attribution Share Alike 4.0 International License. Thank you so much for listening. Talk to you tomorrow.